Hello, everybody. It is Saturday, March 21st. Welcome to Living Life. You know, uh, February in America uh, marks a very significant holiday. Can you guess what holiday that is? It's called Valentine's Day. And of course, this is a time when every husband, <laughs> every boyfriend, every male has to show a certain type of, you know, love and affection towards their significant other. So um, I took out my wife to a, a really nice, wonderful Valentine's meal. And, you know, I told her how I feel about her. And I was telling her, you know, how beautiful she is and all these wonderful things. And I was even telling her how much I love you, you know, saying, hey, honey, I love you so much. And you know how she responded? That's great and all, but you know how you can really show me your love? And I was like, how? Say, well, you can show me that you really love me by doing the dishes more, doing some of your laundry, cleaning up your room. <laughs> she was like, I want, to, I want you to not only say that you love me, I want you to show me. You know, there's this uh, song by Paula Abdul that said, what have you done for me lately? You know, these kinds of questions that we have. And sometimes it's so often easy to say I love you with our lips, but do we truly mean it with all of our hearts? That's the kind of exchange that is going on between Simon Peter and Jesus in the text as we approach John chapter 21, verse 15. Let's go into that today. John chapter 21, verses 15 through 25. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, Take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, Feed my sheep. I tell you the truth, when you are younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, Follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumor spread among the brothers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. So right before Jesus comes to the disciples and he shows that he is truly the resurrected Lord, he shows him that uh, them that how much he loves them, and he continues to uh, show the disciples his love by not only telling them but also feeding them, 
having table fellowship was a which was a sign of intimacy in those days. You don't just eat with anybody. You eat with those people that you love and that you are close to. He is constantly showing his attention and his blessings. And it comes a time when Jesus now challenges their love and their devotion to him. Now Jesus is saying, I've already shown you my love. I've shown you the ultimate love. Not only did I give you my life, not only give you, gave, did I give you my time and my energy and my feelings and my love and everything, I have even ultimately died for you. He is showing his love straight out to the disciples. The question now that Jesus has for the disciples is, how much do you love me? And we come to a very, very famous uh, uh, passage here in John's chap John chapter 21, verse 15 to 25. And you remember that whole uh, passage. I mean, you guys heard millions of sermons on this. Do you love me? At Jesus asking uh, Simon, son of, son of John, do you love me three times? And, uh, you know, um, he's saying yes. And, uh, you know, feed my lambs. You guys know that passage very, very well. Um, a lot of uh, sermons you heard uh, Jesus showing, um, you know, uh, Simon Peter his love three times, you know, in, in contrast to the three times that Peter denied him. You know, you have heard that Jesus saying, do you love me in agape, the, the term agape, and in the end, uh, you know, he says, do you love me even phileo? I mean, you've heard of all these uh, details of this passage. Passage. But ultimately, in the end, what is going on here is Jesus telling, uh, as he's t uh, talking to Simon Peter, the question that he's asking is, how are you going to respond to my love? Are you going to respond to my love with your lips? Just by saying, yes, I love you, you know that I love you? Or are you actually going to show me through your life, by showing me your love? This is a question that I think we need to even ask ourselves. Do we just love Jesus with our lips, with our thoughts, or do we really love Jesus through our actions? You know, um, you know the term uh, or the phrase, action speaks louder than words? You know, absolutely. So the question is, do you just love Jesus with your lips or your thoughts quite simply, or do you love Jesus with your whole being? And when I say this, it's, you know, going back to the, to the, uh, you know, the Bible when Jesus says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. You know, heart being the center of your will or your volition, your, your willingness and you doing something, right? Your, your mind with a thoughtfulness that goes in your mind about your love for Jesus. And also your soul, meaning the, the center of emotion, really being able to love Him completely. Do we give Jesus lip service or is it evident that we are loving Him with all that is within us? You know, Jesus absolutely, He is absolutely deserving of an unfragmented love. You know, we partialize our love. Sometimes we love with our heart, sometimes we love with our volition, uh, volition or, or mind or even with our lips. But, you know, Jesus is so deserving of us loving Him with all our being, just the way He, he loved us with all of His being. In all of those ways, including absolutely His life. He, I mean, He gave up His life in love for you. I mean, He has shown that are we willing to do the same? And oftentimes we go around and when we are challenged by that, we start going and picking apart different people's devotion for Jesus. You know, it says here, um, uh, Jesus said to indicate the kind of death by uh, which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who's going to betray you? When Peter asked him, he asked, Lord, what about him? What about John? Jesus answered, if I, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Jesus is basically saying is, when you're challenged from the Lord in terms of how you are loving him, don't look at the way other people are loving Jesus. Focus on how you're loving Jesus. Focus on 
your commitment, your calling. Let me tell you, everybody's relationship with Jesus is different. There's none to compare. There's nothing to compare. Just do your best in your relationship with the Lord. That is very special to you and Him. And He desires you to fully focus on that and to love Him with who you are. Not with what other per- people are, but with who you are, with all your heart, mind, and soul. So in closing, I would like to give you an application. You know, oftentimes we love to love Jesus with our mind, our thoughts. You know, we think about the stories in the Bible and then we say, oh, thank you, Jesus. And so it translates from our mind to our lips. Oftentimes it is in that dimension that we love Jesus. Sometimes we don't even feel anything. But yet, in the mind, there is something that is going on where we love Jesus. Well, totally fine, but it needs to also be connected to our emotions, doesn't it? Where we just are emotionally impacted. Oh, Jesus, thank you so much. And now, our hearts are stirring, and then it comes to the next step, which is volition, your will. Your will to do the things that Jesus wants you to do. For example, if it's, you know... um, giving more to Jesus uh, in terms of your time or your effort, going out and evangelizing, feeding the poor, loving on people, being more uh, participatory at church, whatever it takes to show Jesus that you're serious about your relationship with Him. Whether it is you going to church early and praying and preparing yourself for worship, whether it is you like really showing the Lord with your will, that you really care and you really love Him, bringing everything together, your body, your heart, your mind, soul, your lips, everything that is within you, and really giving God and Jesus that love that He deserves. I really believe that it's time for us to do that. Bring it all together. Don't give Him fragmented love. Don't give Him just one part of your love. Give Him your whole being. Everything that is within you. Bless His holy name. With all that is within you. That's what the scripture says. So with that, I want to challenge you. I want to pray for you. I want to bless you. Lord Jesus, I know that many times uh, we think that we love you, but it's, it's so fragmented. And we have yet to discover or even receive this powerful love that we need to receive and also give. Lord, give us the ability as we hear your word, as we study your word, as we relate with you through prayer and through worship. Give us the ability to be open and to give all ourselves to you. Body, mind, soul, heart, lips, everything that is of ourselves, may we give to you. May we not look at Anybody else, let us just look at who I am before you and just give you my all, give you my best, and give you all my love that we may have this intimacy that we all long for with you. So Lord, bless each and every one of our brothers and sisters who are out there today. May this word go deeply into their hearts and in their minds and in their souls. In Jesus' name, amen.